next the question who is presenting any questions or any doubts on that anybody has got any questions okay right sir i'll be presenting next sir ah go ahead ma syncope and cpr in dental emergencies sir hmm cpr or cardiac arrest I think the wording is uh, yes, in fainting and cardiac arrest in dental care. Yes, that is the question. Okay. <laughs> okay. CPR means it's a resuscitation, but cardiac arrest is the event. Okay. Okay, sir. Ah, so you can go ahead and. So medical emergencies are uncommon in dental practice when present with emergencies. Timely intervention and management need uh, adequate skill and the knowledge. Medical emergencies could be from simple fainting to cardiac arrest. Mm. So, uh, we should take a thorough history and general examination before uh, doing any procedure. And if the patient has any pre existing medical illness like asthma, epilepsy, and we should always check that the patient uh, has taken the drug on the morning of the procedure and it should be readily available in case of any emergencies. And there is a checklist before starting any procedure, uh, before starting any dental procedure. Mm. Oxygen delivery devices, mm. drugs like adrenaline, which is available in 1 in 1,000 and 1 in 10,000 dilutions, mm. nitroglycerin as a spray and a chewable tablet, antihistamines like diphenhydramine and chlorpheniramine, salbutamol respules, aspirin uh, 300 milligram tablet. Oral carbohydrate drink in case of any hypoglycemic emergency. Glucogon 1 milligram, which can be given intramuscular in an adult patient. Atropin 0.6 mg, ephedrine, corticosteroids. Morphine, which is recommended in ACLS uh, for uh, severe pain like uh, anginal pain. And naloxone, wherever we use morphine, we should have naloxone. Nitrous oxide, which is an alternative for morphine, used as uh, used in a combination with oxygen at 35% concentration. Benzodiazepines like diazepam, midazolam, lorazepam, in case of any uh, epilepsy. Flumazenil, since we are using benzodiazepines, 25% dextrose or 50% dextrose. And basic equipments like stethoscopes, pigmo manometer, auto delivery devices, IV fluids, sets, IV cannulas, syringes and needles, and automated external defibrillator. Mm -hmm. So there are some steps to ensure uh, syncope is a transient loss of consciousness, which decreases blood supply to the brain, causing cerebral ischemia. So the patient will land in loss of consciousness. So there are some steps to ensure an adequate delivery of oxygenated blood to the brain prior to delivery of definitive care. It, it has, uh, they have given a mnemonic like DRS ABC, which is same as the BLS protocol, where D stands for uh, check for danger, which is seen safety, ensure the safety of the patient and the safety of the care provider. A patient may need to be moved away from this dental instruments and the dental tray. And R stands for uh, assess responsiveness, a simple gentle tap or a shake. And we should command a patient that are you okay? And there is a mnemonic to check for responsiveness, which is A, V, P, U, A for alert, V for response to verbal stimulus, P whether the patient is responding to pain, U the patient is unresponsive. And yes is uh, call for help, which is sh shout for help. And then airway breathing and circulation. If the patient uh, has pulse, but no respiration, we have to give rescue breaths, one breath every six seconds or 10 breaths uh, in a minute. And we have to check for the pulse every two minutes. If there is no pulse, we have to immediately start CPR. If the patient has no pulse, no respiration, we have to start CPR at 30 compressions with two rescue breaths. We have to consider the differential diagnosis for syncope, which can be uh, hyperventilation or vasovagal syncope because of pain and anxiety. It could be acute hypoglycemia, 
could be myocardial infection with cardiac arrest, could be anaphylactic shock, could be because of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. And the uh, prolonged sitting and vasodilation, which leads to pooling of blood in the peripheral circulation. And on top of it, the vagal stimulation, which decreases the heart rate, decreases cardiac output, decreases blood supply to the brain, which leads to syncope. If it is a simple syncope, uh, we have to make the patient lie flat and raise the legs, which increases the blood supply to the brain, and the patient will uh, rest immediately. Uh, we have to look for any articarial rash, angioedema, and signs of bronchospasm. And it could be because of anaphylactic shock, assess the degree of cardiovascular collapse and airway obstruction. We have to stop further administration of the offending drug, which is responsible for anaphylaxis, and check for airway breathing circulation. We have uh, to admin, uh, administer adrenaline as the first line of drug in case of anaphylaxis which is 0.5 ml of uh, 1 milligram adrenaline intramuscular injection in an emergency or 150 mics to 100 mics of adrenaline in case of intravenous. We have to repeat it every 5 minutes. Uh, if the patient is hypotensive and has raised venous pressure, tachycardia, it could be myocardial infection with pump failure and which leads to pulmonary edema. And the other causes like foreign body leading to upper airway obstruction. It could be partial obstruction or complete obstruction. If the patient has distress, choking, and patient started coughing, difficulty in uh, talking, we have to consider partial obstruction. We have to encourage the patient to cough or spit it out. Or if the patient has worsening uh, breathlessness or strider, we have to consider it as a complete obstruction and we have to give. We have to support the chest with one hand and deliver five sharp back blows between the shoulder blades with the heels of the other hand. If, if it fails, we have to then do a hemorrhage maneuver. We have to stand behind the patient with making a tight fist over the uh, with a non-dominant hand in the abdomen and the dominant hand holding the fist. We have to give a uh, upward and the backward abdominal thrust in case of choking if the patient develops uh, if the patient had muscle rigidity a jerky movements excessive salivation urinary incontinence then we should suspect the patient is having a seizure and we have to remove any dangerous objects from the mouth uh, and around the patient we have to lose the tight clothings uh, avoid restra uh, restraining the patient or uh, trying to insert any job into the mouth Administer lorazepam or diazepam uh, intramuscularly or metazolam intravenous, uh, intravenously. If the patient is stable, keep the patient in the recovery position. Or if the patient is not stable, then follow the BLS protocol, airway breathing and circulation. If the patient is hyperventilating because of anxiety or pain, it will lead to washout of CO2, which decreases the carbon dioxide. Uh, which leads to uh, loss of respiratory drive and apnea. On the other side, uh, it causes cerebral vasoconstriction, decreases the uh, cerebral blood flow and cerebral ischemia, where the patient will go to loss of consciousness. This cycle repeats, the patient will regain consciousness once uh, CO2 builds up and the patient will start breathing. If the patient is in the conscious state, we have to encourage the patient to breathe through a closed uh, bag so that the patient will rebreathe CO2. And if the patient is unconscious, we have to maintain airway breathing and circulation. Mm -hmm. If the LOC, uh, loss of consciousness prolongs, then we have to follow BLS protocol. And we should suspect some diabetic emergencies like hypoglycemia, if the patient is having sweating, tremor, agitation, and uh, progressively will develop confusion or coma. So, if the patient is conscious, uh, we have to give him some oral carbohydrate uh, like fruit juices, sugar, or any glucose powder dissolved in water. If the patient is unconscious, we have to try administering 25% D or 
50 percent dextrose and if the patient is not still stable and collapses we have to follow bls protocol and in case of local anesthetic systemic toxicity the three pillars of last management is airway breathing circulation seizure management and consider giving 20 percent that is all sir. thank okay. you sir welcome uh, <clears throat> This is uh, the answer that you are given. What I presume is uh, whenever students get a question in the theory paper, they feel that they have to write at least minimum two to three pages and answer for that. Okay. It is not always necessary to do that. Okay. Here the question wording is painting and cardiac arrest in dental care anesthesia <clears throat> and uh, but you started off saying what are all the uh, equipment and the preparations that you have to be ready with uh, in a dental clinic to face an emergency okay so yes, uh, without elaborating on why a patient coming for a dental procedure should have a fainting or develop a cardiac arrest, which should be our first description in the answer. Okay. Then you can go on to say how you manage each and every <coughs> uh, underlying cause for that particular condition, and then try to elaborate on the treatment or management of that. So instead of that, starting off saying that these are all the things that you have to keep ready and then start your anesthesia. Uh, in case they ask you the management of fainting and cardiac arrest in dental, uh, dental care, <clears throat> then your answer will be correct. How you have to be equipped and how you have to go and manage the okay? But when the question is just fainting and cardiac arrest in dental, dental, in dental care, your answer should first focus on what are all the <clears throat> etiologies for this particular complication to happen in a dental care. Okay. So you can enumerate all that. All you have enumerated later on, each and every condition you have enumerated. So as you rightly said, first of all, a proper examination and history taking is very, very important. You must find out whether the patient is a ASA one or two grade patient or he has a ASA three or four. Nowadays, I don't know how many of you have the experience. Recently, one of my cousin sisters who is 80 plus wanted to have a <clears throat> her uh, molar extracted because of uh, decay and uh, the dentist wanted a fitness certificate from uh, her physician before she could do the extraction okay so that much of awareness is there among the dental surgeons themselves saying that what are all the comorbid conditions the patient has so i have to give a fitness certificate that these are all the following uh, comorbidities she has and these are all the medications she is taking and uh, she is not on any antiplatelet agents or uh, the drugs which cause uh, any depression in her uh, total count or differential count. And she, can, she is fit enough to go undergo the procedure. After I gave the certificate only, they <coughs> took her for the extraction. Okay. So the first thing is a proper evaluation of the patient to find out whether they have any comorbidities which can be the cause for the painting and cardiac arrest that can ensue in that. So in that situation, <clears throat> as you rightly said, patient may be a known epileptic, patient may be a hypertensive patient, patient may be a patient with already a myocardial infarct and patient who had already had a chronic diabetes. Okay, all these things are the possible causes of this complication to occur. Okay, mm -hmm. so in your answer, first elaborate that and then briefly mention how you can manage. So it is not always necessary that you should write about everything <clears throat> to make up at least three or four pages of answer for a question like this. Even if you write one and one and a half pages and give all the important points, I think that should be good enough for this. So <clears throat> don't unnecessarily waste your time writing all the details about uh, CPR and the BLS protocol and all those things not necessary here. I'll just uh, share my screen and give you a little bit of simple idea about how to go about this particular 
answer. Is my screen visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, right. Uh, so the topic is fainting and cardiac arrest under dental care in dental care. So the major reasons for fainting spell is due to either pain, fear, emotional stress, or anxiety. These are the four simple reasons why a fainting spell can happen. Patients who are having a very low tolerance to pain, even at the sight of the dental surgeon holding the dental syringe for uh, giving the local. That itself can cause fainting. Some people have uh, very low tolerance to pain. So the simple uh, injection in the mucous membrane itself will be able to produce a vasovagal type of attack and make them faint. That is why nowadays majority of the uh, dentists, if you have observed, they first apply a local jelly. 2% or 4% xylitin will be applied to the mucosa where they want to inject numb that area and then give the injection so that they can avoid this injection pain itself. And uh, some people are inherently very <coughs> nervous uh, when you say you are going to give an injection and pull out the tooth. That itself may cause this. So these are the four basic important reasons for painting spell. And most dental patients who otherwise paint are uh, normal. They are almost uh, ASA 1 or 2. Suddenly they have this fainting spell. Sometimes rarely allergic reactions can happen. And uh, <clears throat> have you heard of the local anesthetic called Articane? It is not popularly used by our dentists as long as I know in our uh, regions. But in USA, majority of the dental surgeons use this local anesthetic called Articane. Uh, which has got the potential to produce the allergic or anaphylactic reaction. Then adrenaline, which is always in, uh, in combination with the local anesthetic used by the majority of the dental surgeons to uh, prevent bleeding. That can be directly injected by mistake without uh, uh, <coughs> inject without aspirating. Sometimes they have a, what is the concentration of adrenaline in the local that they use? One in two lakhs or 200,000 is what we normally use. But dental people, they have a separate cartridge. Have you seen those cartridges? No, sir. Uh, they, it contains 80,000. Adrenaline, one in 80,000. So it is much more powerful and more stronger. So if it is uh, directly injected into the vascular compartment, then it can produce severe tachycardia, hypertension, and that itself can cause a collapse of the patient. Then sometimes without the elderly people, the bad luck of the surgeon and the patient, the stroke can develop when the patient is undergoing the procedure in the dental chair, which can cause the fainting or the cardiac arrest. Our patients, as uh, we are correctly said, no asthmatics. If they get an acute attack because of the panic or fear, that may precipitate an acute asthmatic attack, and that may produce not only uh, <clears throat> hypoxia can produce, which can cause the fainting, and epileptic seizures. So unless you have asked the history about previous uh, epilepsy and confirm that the patient is taking his medications correctly. A sudden epileptic seizure may be the cause for the fainting. And uh, previous history of cardiac disease, especially myocardial infarction uh, or coronary artery diseases, these are the patients who are likely to develop a sudden cardiac arrest. Or DM patients, diabetic patients who have recurring hypoglycemic episodes, even before the procedure, they can develop a sudden hypoglycemia because dental surgeons usually advocate, advise their patients to eat and come for the procedure. When it is done under local anesthesia, they always say you cannot eat for four hours or six hours or you cannot chew anything hard after a dental procedure. So majority of the dental surgeons instruct their patients to have something to eat or drink 
<coughs> and then come so that they can uh, avoid eating or chewing post of or the post procedure so in a dental patient in diabetic patients if they don't follow this instruction they can develop hypoglycemia in the dental chair which can cause to or lead to fainting and cardiac arrest and if they are given any inhalation technique in the earlier days even now in the um, european countries and western world uh, the dentists themselves administer <coughs> oxygen nitrous oxide combination especially for uh, older children and uncooperative adults they give inhalation uh, by uh, mask inhalation with oxygen nitrous oxide and uh, produce pain relief and do the procedure so there is always a risk of airway loss and choking and aspiration which can lead to this particular problem okay so <clears throat> who is the person who demonstrated nitrous oxide anesthesia for dental procedure and failed history of anesthesia again he himself was a dental doctor only so he discovered the what was the first use of uh, nitrous oxide was it for anesthesia as or for it in either purpose no. nowadays you are seeing a lot of news about drugs being used are in, um, smuggled or morton sir wtg morton morton described ether anesthesia actually nitrous oxide when it was uh, invented by joseph priestley and uh, it was actually for a chemical purpose he did, um, discovered that but it was used as a party drug the other name for nitrous oxide is laughing gas yes. you no know? so people when they inhale it for a few second they get uh, euphoric and they start laughing incessantly so it was called laughing gas so it was used by the westerners for uh, enjoyment during parties as a drug for inebriation and uh, euphoria and uh, horas wells was the first uh, dentist who uh, He started experimenting with that and he used this drug in his practice and did the dental extractions without the patient having any pain and before morton he wanted to exhibit or demonstrate this to a medical audience and claim uh, that he has found out a new drug for producing a pain pain free dental extraction but unfortunately <clears throat> when he uh, administered the uh, nitrous oxide and uh, tried to pull the pull out the tooth from the patient patient cried and uh, shouted that he is having a pain and uh, all the medical fraternity who were watching the demonstration dubbed him as a fraud and condemned him and uh, press wells became so depressed that ultimately he went it for depression he became an addict and uh, died a very pathetic death but actually his uh, experiments with uh, nitrous oxide were the ones which stimulated other people to start using it okay so when you use nitrous oxide there is always a chance of choking and uh, aspiration and uh, sometimes adrenal crisis patients who have been on long term steroids if you are not heard about i mean asked about it and documented that and if you are not supplemented that those patients can have a sudden fainting and collapse <clears throat> and lastly patients who already have a syncopal attack like transient ischemic attack patients they can also develop a fainting and cardiac arrest okay so these are all the reasons for that so you can just mention these reasons and then <clears throat> you can add a line about how to manage all these problems <clears throat> and uh, finish up that answer this is all what is required for your uh, completion of this particular topic so don't always think that you have to write three pages or four pages for any question that is asked so if your answer contains all the important points that is required that is more than enough anyway for your extra knowledge <coughs> i am just showing a chart by the nisora where commonly used local anesthetics in nasofacial anesthesia or dental anesthesia are the 
macrophage resurgence. This uh, articaine, what the Vasa constrictor, is a, it's an amide local anesthetic. Then they use benzocaine, which is an ester. Rutubicaine is very rarely used. To my knowledge, none of our uh, <coughs> dentists are using. Chlorpropane is again used in the Western world. Etidocaine is an amide local anesthetic, which is uh, <coughs> used without or with epinephrine. They are very commonly used uh, drug for, by most of the, the dentists that I know of is lignocaine and uh, other drugs are mepivacaine, trilocaine, procaine and tetracaine which are all. So a combination of ester and amide are all used by the maxillofacial surgeons in the western world. But in our country the common drug that we use is lignocaine and in the USA, articaine is the drug which is commonly used by most of the dental surgeons. And one more thing that you can remember is about the nerve supply, which is required to be blocked when you give a local anesthesia for uh, any dental or facial procedure, especially maxillary procedure. The nerve supply of the maxillary area is by these uh, nerves. One is by the infraorbital nerve, anterior superior alveolar, middle superior alveolar, and posterior superior alveolar. So the alveoli part, <coughs> the gum and the teeth part is by three nerves, superior, middle, and posterior, I mean anterior, middle, and posterior, superior alveolar nerve. Then the heart palate area is by nasopalatine block and greater palatine block. This, <coughs> Knowledge about the heart palate is important in a, which particular surgery which we come across. Where do you, as anesthesiologist, where you will you we'll be using this mesopalatine block and greater palatine block? Which particular surgery as anesthetist we can use? Any idea? In fact, what is the surgery done for when there is a deficiency or a gap in the palate? What is that called? Left palate. Ah, left palate. Left palate. Left palate correction surgery. He can use this mesopalatine block and greater palatine block. The greater palatine now will come out through the greater palatine artery through the palatine foramen here, and nasopalatine nerve will come here. Okay. So uh, one. Two, three, four, five, six nerves are there supplying the maxillary portion of the face. Okay, infraorbital nerve for the lip and uh, alveolar, uh, superior alveolar nerve, which is divided into anterior, middle, and posterior. And palate is by the nasopalatine and greater palatine. So these are all the nerves supplying the maxilla, which are all mostly branches from the trigeminal nerve. Okay. Whereas the mandibular now <coughs> is mainly by the buccal, inferior alveolar, and incisive nerve block. Okay, so these are the or the, the tongue is by the lingual nerve. So these are the four nerves which you have to remember for mandibular anatomy. And this is that special dental syringe <coughs> where you can uh, fix the uh, the cartridge. So this is the place where the cartridge will be inserted and the thumb ring is the one which we use instead of the common uh, piston which we have in uh, the routine use. Of course, nowadays most of them use disposable syringes like what we are using in our OT. So this is the uh, <clears throat> older day dental syringe. So this is called the breech loading metallic cartridge type aspirating syringe. Okay. And uh, this is the topical anesthesia. What I said is a uh, benzocaine. So this is the ester uh, local anesthetic. And we have uh, uh, this uh, topical paste is available. But most of our dentists use 2% uh, xylacaine jelly on the gums before injecting the local anesthetic to avoid the pain that is caused by the injection. Okay? So these are all some of the points I thought <coughs> will be useful to you. And uh, so that completes the answer for that particular question. Okay. Right. <coughs>